Hi guys. It is what I'm hoping is the last winter night of the year here in the Oasis of Freedom. Uh, it is now Valentine's night. It is Monday, February 14th. And I am sitting here in the Point Lonesome Swamp with my little Valentine, Sancho Panza, obviously. Uh, me and Sancho hanging out on Valentine's Day in the Point Lonesome Swamp. And on Monday, February 14th, 2022, guys. So anyway, guys, I did this entire rant a couple of days ago. Sancho Panza and I sat and did this entire rant. This is this week's now uh, how many day late uh, Manga Bay Roundup, the Ecological Meltdown Roundup rant. Did the entire rant. Went to upload it on my computer and there was no sign of it. No sign of it. Apparently for about 30 minutes I sat there and talked to myself and I have been uh, obviously in a rage over this, but uh, since I have nothing else to do on Valentine's night except to sit here and drink alone with my little dog, I guess for the second time I'm going to talk to my imaginary uh, Valentines out there in the Doomosphere, and we're going to bring you for the second and final time uh, <clears throat> this week's late but uh, dollar short and daylight, ecological meltdown roundup rant. Let's see what was on the mind of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over there at Manga Bay while I was out there with my little dog, enjoying it while we still can. And we're going to start out in Ecuador. The, 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 guys, th this is not... <laughs> not the onion. All you can do is laugh at a certain point. <clears throat> Ecuador's top court rules for stronger land rights for indigenous communities. Ecuador's constitutional court, which is like, I guess, like our Supreme Court, has ruled that an indigenous community's right to free, prior, and informed consultation was violated by oil projects and called for stronger protections to guarantee indigenous communities' rights to decide over extractive projects in their territories. Yes. <clears throat> the ruling, here's the, uh, the knee slapper number one, the ruling will immediately affect oil and mining projects across the country as they must now, meaning the planet eaters, must now seek the consent of indigenous communities who might be affected by their activities. <clears throat> President Guillermo Lasso has not yet commented on the ruling, <laughs> as he is currently in China trying to renegotiate part of the country's massive debt a debt he has sought to address with increased oil and mining projects across his country. And uh, guys, you know, this is exactly, I, I, I need to call up uh, some of these uh, ecological meltdown roundup rants from about 10 years ago. I've been doing this for like 10 years where this is exactly what I called, you know, back there when that little uh, planet-eating snake in the grass, Raphael Correa, you know, that little darling uh, of the clueless uh, greeny lefties, uh, you know, putting the rights of nature in the Ecuadorian constitution while he was running up all of this debt with China knowing damn well that they were never going to be able to pay it back. All of, the, all of these chickens were going to come home to roost. And guess what? How do you think they're paying China back after mortgaging off the entire country is by 
giving China the oil and minerals. This is directly from the playbook of uh, <clears throat> Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. When was that book written? Over 20 years ago when John Perkins spelled this out for anybody who does not understand how this game works. Uh, the idea of the economic hitman, uh, in this case the Chinese economic hitman, this is called the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative in action. And guys, uh, I've already done this once, uh, so I'm not, I'm, I'm going to hit on a few of these. A lot of the stories <clears throat> this week, uh, Coming out of Cambodia, several versions all around this story here. So I'm only going to read uh, one, one of these because there's five of these stories. How a dirty gambling company may have set the standard for habitat destruction in Cambodia. Yeah, Cambodia and everywhere else. Union Development Group is a Chinese corporation that was granted a 36,000 hectare, otherwise known as about a 90,000 acre concession inside Cambodia's Botum Sakura National Park in 2008, followed by an additional 9,000 hectare call it 20,000 acre concession granted in 2011 and since then much of the national parks forest have been cleared by UDG and other companies. Um, in September of 2020 the U.S. Treasury Department sanctioned UDG for serious human rights abuses and corruptions. Um, you know, talking about how these planet eaters were teaming up with the Royal Cambodian Armed Forces to, uh, you know, to harass all these people and how they managed to skirt the 10,000 hectare limit on land concessions by falsely registering the Chinese corporation as a Cambodian owned entity. Last year, the Cambodian government signed into law a new decree which transformed some 127,000 hectares, call it over 250,000 acres of protected land into state private land, conservationists and local residents worry that the decree will mean that many other parts of the province will follow in the destruction of Botum Sakor. So we have another way. The playbook is playing out. We, we have Ecuador uh, up in, in, in debt to China to their ears, paying off their debt in oil and minerals. We have uh, these corrupt uh, Canadian, the Cambodian uh, folks, uh, you know, falsely calling this, uh, you know, hiding the fact that this is a China, that they're giving away hundreds of thousands of acres of protected land to a Chinese corporation. This is called the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. This is called the Chinese Empire. Not going to get into this debate with Caitlin Johnstone whether China is an empire or not. And I guess finally I did hear in the mainstream media that China is now beginning to build military bases uh, in other countries uh, outside of China. 
So that is, the, you know, these people, these China apologists claiming that China is not an empire. Uh, come on, give me a break. Uh, this story here, this the Corona panic story, uh, also showing up in the man in the mainstream media, uh, preventing the next pandemic. This is manga based spin on it. You know already uh, the you, you, you see what's had there already talking about the next pandemic. You know the real pandemic one that might kill a few more humans than, where are we, 0.3% after two years, uh, already setting us up for the next pandemic. This is a real tough one to call. Okay, over here to Madagascar, talking about, uh, you know, this is, uh, Manga Bay does a YouTube video every week. They're talking about this uh, clash between, uh, you know, small-time fishermen in uh, Madagascar going up against these giant industrial trawlers. Take a wild guess where most of these giant industrial trawlers, fishing trawlers are coming from. Can you say China? We have Ecuador. We have Cambodia. We have Madagascar. I think we're going to talk about Argentina if I remember this rant well enough. Uh, China, the Chinese Empire, with no help from the rest of this planet, will take down this planet. China will destroy planet Earth. Call it what you want to. It is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative strangling the planet. From Madagascar to Argentina, talking about uh, sharks being overfished, uh, you know, uh, anyway, moving along, I think we get it. I've been talking about this one since 2009 about these Canadian planet eaters down there in Guatemala for how many years? I mean, good Lord, that was 12 years ago. I was down there in Guatemala reporting on this. And wow, indigenous community takes Guatemalan land rights fight to international court. Good luck. Yes. Uh, the, Fien the Canadian owned Phoenix nickel mine license suspended by a court order was reinstated last month following a controversial consultation process held during a period of indigenous protest and crackdowns. Okay, for anybody who does not understand the difference between forest degradation and outright deforestation Amazon, the Amazon rainforest is losing far more carbon from forest degradation than uh, actually, you know, than, than full-scale deforestation. Uh, you know, looking at this very complicated study, uh, it, it, I, I don't have. Um, Uh, time to get into this uh, about uh, you know all of the attention on the total obliteration of old growth forest. Well, uh, thinking that you could just a little bit obliterate the the Amazon right anyway. All right, uh, again moving on down. Uh, I love it when they ask a question. This is not just a yes or no question. 
sort of. Is a European proposal on imported deforestation too punitive? The answer to the question is that uh, in any proposal on imported deforestation is not punitive enough. There you go. One third of global uh, deforestation is linked to international trade in the EU and the UK uh, account for 16% of global trade related deforestation. Um, anyway, is it too punitive? There you go. Alright, uh, here, get, get ready to hear more about this tree, uh, the, the Tamanu tree, uh, going up against the oil palm tree as the newest uh, biofuel. Yes. <clears throat> well, th th this is a good thing. Uh, the, the big advantage of the Tamanu tree over the palm tree is uh, it has shown the ability to grow in burned areas and former mining sites. <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, uh, there, there's plenty of places for, uh, good lord, uh, it ought to do great. Uh, talking about the Indonesia, Indonesian government's ambitious biodiesel programming requi program requiring the establishment of more plantations. Uh, I've already mentioned this next story somewhere. Uh, Well, let's while we're let's stay over there in Indonesia, uh, right next to that next story. In Indonesia, a devious policy <coughs> silences opposition to mining. Hmm. Activists in Indonesia have highlighted what they say is an increase <coughs> in arrest of people protesting against mining activities since the passage of a controversial mining law in 2020. They've singled out Article 62 as a devious policy <clears throat> that is meant to quash all opposition to mining activity even at the expense of communities and the environment. Imagine that. <clears throat> I don't know if this is just in Indonesia. This is everywhere on the planet. And I mentioned this, I know, in a couple of weeks ago in a rant. New assessment finds dragonflies and damselflies in trouble worldwide. A global assess assessment of more than 6,000 dragonfly species shows that 16% are at risk of extinction. I take that with a major grain of salt. Wow, you will not believe this, that the main threats to these insects are the human destruction of their wetland habitats, water pollution, and climate change. All right. We finally have Bill Gates showing up in a Manga Bay roundup. I knew it was uh, only a matter of time before the Gates Foundation uh, being fingered as planet eaters. Gates Foundation, uh, among investors backing troubled oil palm plantation in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, this planet-eating corporation operates three 
oil palm plantations. Um, according to the report, Congolese police and the company's security forces have been repeatedly accused of violence against local villages over the past year. Yeah, you know, guys, reading, you know, come on, what does Bill Gates, why, why does Bill Gates have to be investing in oil palm plantations? You know, you would think that Bill Gates w would have enough damn money, all right? Why, why does Bill Gates need to, to, be, to be sending money to oil palm plantations in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I, I, I guess so he can get a, what, a 20th yacht? Anyway, here we go. I, this headline gets right to the point. We should be pretty concerned. There you go. We should be pretty concerned. Study shows only 15% of coastal regions still intact. A new study has found that only 15.5% of the world's coastal regions remain intact, while the vast majority of coastal areas are either highly or extremely impacted by human activities such as fishing, agriculture, and development. Yes, the nations with the largest swaths of undamaged coastline, not surprisingly, include Canada, Russia, and Greenland, that the researchers only had data up to 2013, so their findings are likely to be an underestimation. And the study also did not factor in the impacts of climate change doing a study of the world's coastal regions and not mentioning sea level rise. This is more stories um, from Cambodia all around this same story uh, asking the question, can ecotourism save Cambodia's ghost parks, meaning all of these national parks being butchered by these planet eaters. The question is no, ecotourism cannot save Cambodia's ghost parks. And if you haven't understood this by now, uh, endangered wildlife face perilous future as vital habitat loses protection in Cambodia. This is just more and more on the, on the same uh, story. Uh, researchers say the degradation of these habitats could result in trophic cascades in which the loss of key species destabilizes entire ecosystems, which in turn lead to further loss. Gee, where have we heard this next story? Caged orangutan found in Indonesian politician's home. Yes, this is the head of uh, Indonesia's Langkat district had an illegal pet orangutan. He is now only the latest in a long line of public officials found to be keeping protected uh, species. During the raid, authorities also found dozens of people in iron barred cells. Not only the orangutan in the cage, but dozens of people in iron barred, barred cells in the home who were allegedly forced to work on the politician's oil palm plantation, uh, prompting an investigation into whether they were subject to modern slavery. I love it. We go down a, to the bottom of the planet, well, not quite to Antarctica, to the bottom of South America, 
to Chile's Tierra del Fuego, which means, of course, land of fire. So what do you think is going on in the land of fire? If your guess was fire, give yourself a gold star. Fires threaten vital peatland in Chile's Tierra del Fuego. Fires that started in mid-January continue to burn through forest, peatland, and grassland near Chile's Caraquinca National Park on the island of Tierra del Fuego. Um, conservation is especially worried about the damage being done to the peatlands, an ecosystem that sequesters twice as much carbon as the Earth's entire forest cover. Yep, yep, yep. We've mentioned this one before. Demand for sea cucumbers turns India and Sri Lanka waters into a trafficking hotspot. The sea cucumber fishery is banned in India and restricted in Sri Lanka, but growing demand for the animals in East Asia, can you say China, has turned the waters between the South Asian countries into a hot spot for the illegal trade. Yep, yep, yep. The over harvesting of sea cucumbers has severely depleted their populations. Alright, over in Madagascar we have two storms in two weeks carving a trail of death and destruction. Yes we do. I love this one. Even Degraded forests are more ecologically valuable than no forest. There you go. From that one, uh, that, that uh, no shit Sherlock statement about this headline, there's not much hope. There's not much hope as Mediterranean corals collapse under relentless heat. In 2003, a marine heat wave devastated coral reef communities in the Mediterranean Sea, including those in Scandola Marine Reserve. More than 15 years later, the coral reef communities still have not recovered. Researchers determined that persistent marine heat waves, which are now happening every year in the Mediterranean, are preventing the slow-growing coral reefs from recuperating. Human-induced climate change is the culprit. Yes, persistent rising temperatures in the ocean have normalized marine heat waves, not only in the Mediterranean, but in the global oceans. That's what's going on in that marine park. Let's go over from the Mediterranean to the Gulf of Thailand to that reef-rich marine park where we find an oil pipe leak, an oil spill in the Gulf of Thailand that began in, and began in late January threatens to impact coral reefs seagrass beds, and local livelihoods in a nearby marine park. The spill originated from an underwater pipeline and operated by Thailand-based Star Petroleum. Cleanup efforts are underway to deal with the crude oil slick at sea and along beaches. Blah, blah, blah. From uh, crude oil uh, slicks in, uh, over there back to Ecuador 
from crude oil to palm oil polluting with polluting with impunity palm oil companies flout regulations in Ecuador. Community residents and researchers alike decry what they say is dangerous pollution leaching into soil and waterways from oil palm plantations and oil extraction mills in Ecuador. Yes. Uh, in July of 2020, Ecuador's government passed a law to strengthen and develop the production, commercialization, extraction, export, and industrialization of palm oil and its derivatives. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, critics say the regulatory portion of that law has been largely toothless and that the government has turned a blind eye to the social and environmental cost of the country's rapid oil palm plantation expansion. And alongside that story, a, lo a legal loophole <clears throat> allowed palm oil companies in Ecuador to establish their plantations on, es on ancestral land that belongs to small communities. Yes, uh, residents say that agricultural chemicals and waste from plantations is polluting the water sources on which they depend. So what is going on in Paraguay? Uh, don't forget Paraguay. Paraguay's drought hits biodiversity and indigenous communities the hardest. Record-breaking heat waves in Paraguay have led to water shortages and forest fires that threaten both local biodiversity and many of the indigenous communities who steward it. Yes, groups like the Ache and Avagarani have lost their crops and likely face food insecurity should the drought continue. Uh, on and on. Uh, but anyway, guys, I've already done this once. We're gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do one more of these since I understand I'm talking about that. We're gonna end up in Sub-Saharan Africa in Zimbabwe. I'm sure this story is all over the mainstream media uh, tonight. Uh, Zimbabwe's forest go up in smoke to feed its tobacco habit. Tobacco farmers are responsible for a fifth of the total annual deforestation in Zimbabwe, cutting down trees to burn in their tobacco curing barns. While the practice is not permitted, enforcement in Zimbabwe remains lax and solutions yes, have not proved fast or scalable enough to address the problem. With Zimbabwe expected to produce 300,000 metric tons of tobacco by 2025, which will require burning 10 times as much wood as being burned today, the current situation in Zimbabwe is unsustainable, officials warn. Yes, the current situation in Zimbabwe is unsustainable. But for the second time, I'm going to wrap up uh, last week's uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant and uh, get back to my little valentine, Sancho Panza, 
and uh, I highly advise you uh, get out there and enjoy your little Valentine while wow, you still can. Just a little Valentine. Usually pop. Getting late, and it's freezing, and I'm ready for bed. Let's see if this one works. Happy Valentine's Day. Bye, guys.